The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt D&D. I'm Michael Cross, and I play Gideon Block, a paladin with a tragic past. I'm Kiri Hester, and I play Poppy Tealeaf, a hobo and halfling druid searching for a new laugh. I'm Johnny Payne, and I play Zonimus Dinar, a half-elf rogue with a past he can't seem to escape. I'm Brooke Bullock, and I play Mokrin Stonechaper, a young dwarf sorcerer setting out to understand his own arcane gifts. And I'm Ash King, your dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Kalban Frontier. The conversation at dinner has come to a complete and sudden stop as the door to the Amor's dining room has burst open and several rough-looking individuals have entered, their weapons trained on the room's occupants as a warning against trying anything funny. You hear the sound of spurs clinking against the floor as a figure dressed in a long, dark duster and hat enters into the room. His skin is a burnt reddish color, hair the orange of a bright campfire, and his eyes are a nearly glowing yellow. He gives a glance over the group, his gaze settling on Zonimus for just a moment too long before looking at Mayor Jonathan. Pardon the intrusion, Mayor, but we have some unfinished business as he takes off his hat and casually plops himself down into the chair at the end of the long table. Oh, I tell you, It has been a long three days in that jail. He kind of looks over. He's kind of close to you, Poppy, and seeing that you have not touched your mead, he... Mind if I, uh, take a drink? She doesn't say anything. She's not sure what's happening and not sure how to react. She kind of looks around the table, kind of giving what I call hostage eyes, right? Where you can... I'm scared. Um. (laughs) If you lock eyes with Gideon, Gideon just nods at you to Uh, comply with whatever it is he wants. And I just kind of push it a little bit towards him where he's sitting. Oh, thank you so kindly, my dear. He picks it up and... Ah, orcish mead. No finer drink on the frontier. Quite a parched throat I've got here. How many people are here besides this guy? So there's your fine gentleman sitting at the end of the table and then four bandits their bandanas pulled up over their faces to hide their identities and mayor jonathan is kind of sitting he's sitting in his his chair hands gripping the armrests one hand kind of reaching over to to take his wife's hand maria absolutely frozen the three individuals do seem to kind of register you guys as the unknown quantity and as the threat so they are they're keeping an eye on the Amors family, but they're much more interested in keeping you guys seated. You know, friend, it doesn't look like you were invited to Mayor Jonathan's house. I'm curious as to what brings you into this fine abode uninvited and unnamed. Oh, you know, this and that. I'm, I'm a... 
a man of fine taste and a purveyor of literature, Mr. Amos. You've got something that I want, and Mayor Jonathan knows exactly why I'm here. It's just a question of, is he going to give it to me without me having to start a big old ruckus? Well, that would be incredibly impolite of you. Almost as impolite as wrecking our little dinner here. And I still don't know your name. Wiley Moran. Remember it. Gideon uh-huh. Block. Remember that one. Well, that's My it. God, this is boring the hell out of me. Rebecca, will you get Maria and take her upstairs? I'd much prefer the family stays together. <clears throat> I mean... I want to pull my revolver out and set it on the dinner plate right in front of me. <laughs> Go ahead. You'll be all right. <laughs> Your tactics have not changed in the slightest. Hey, Gideon, I want to glance at you and kind of cover my face like I'm wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. And put two fingers up. I'm saying, um... While it just kind of motions, let him go. And Rebecca, you know, very quickly gets up and grabs Maria and they head off. Now, <sighs> Mayor, I just saved your family's life because Smoke Wiley here, he is a <laughs> very, very violent criminal. I guarantee it. This man has done things that would make your skin crawl. I remember this one time. Can I tell them? Oh, please. This one time he dressed up in all black and he lurked in the shadows out of sight of everyone and snuck his way into a completely unarmed halfway locked house where a family was quietly sleeping peacefully in their beds so that he could get his hands on a book while he smokes moran ladies and gentlemen bow or curtsy take your pick and Ocran just looks over is like you told me you didn't have nothing to do with it and you believed me how does that make you feel, Matt? I don't like it much at all. I know, it sounds like I may have fallen to a new low, Zonimus. But what can I say? You leaving broke my heart. You have a heart? Is that so? Because my leaving was in response to being abandoned. Look, Malkin's I'm eyes. sorry. I, I had to protect the others. Mm-hmm. Malkrin's eyes are just looking back and forth, back and forth, and he's put, like, holy moly, like, they, he knows him, and Zonimus, and that guy, and he's a criminal, and they're like, ah, darn thievery duping me all the time. You know, he's just, <laughs> that's mentally, he's just totally taking this in, that obviously Zonimus knows this guy, and what is going on? I owe you a debt of gratitude, Smokes. I do. It's true. I respected you. I followed you. I even loved you. And then you left me there for dead. Covering your own hide. It's supposed to be me and you. But you're in here by force. I'm in here by invitation. And what is an invitation other than just applying force with a different lever? Sure, but it's not going to cost me three days in jail. (laughs) What do you want with this book so bad? I tell you, but you're not family anymore. I don't know if I can trust you. I mean, given our history... I'm inclined to, but I need a show, a proof that I can continue to put my trust in you. Especially meeting like this, where you, apparently you've got some fine new friends. While they're discussing, I am slowly pulling out a dagger out of my belt and out of my boot, and putting, the, keeping them in my hands and underneath the table. Give me a sleight of hand. I'm not good at that. <laughs> and my, my revolver sitting in the pile of mashed potatoes. Right there. <laughs> Oh my goodness, uh, that would be a 22. Woo! Okay, so, so yeah, they're, a, apparently Wiley is just so focused on, I found my dear lost good friend. While I also hearing that, like, this guy's trying to hurt Zonimus' feelings, and Zonimus and I have been spending most of the day together, so I feel like I would have sat next to him at dinner. I'm just going to give him a nice pat and cast guidance. <laughs> <laughs> this yes. is a little pat on the back or on the arm or whatever I can reach. So you get a D4 on an ability check sometime yeah. in the next minute or so. Does Poppy have like a booster seat? Is that what she's saying? <laughs> I imagine that this family is accepting to all kinds of people and has halfling seats. Very nice. Which just make Very us... Nice. They're not high chairs, but they're similar. <laughs> they're, 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 they're higher, higher chairs. Yeah, that would be almost like bar stools. Like bar stools. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. That's awesome. 
So um, I'm going to, yeah. Um, I kind of looked over at Gideon when he went on the whole trust thing, and I want to pull up my napkin from my lap. And I am taking no special care in. I need to make slow, you know, time. I'm just moving like I own the place. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull up the napkin and say, you know, you had my trust for years. And I'm going to pick up my pistol casually like I would any other time. I'm going to start wiping off whatever got on it from laying on <laughs> my plate. And uh, you threw all that away. And you're asking me now to prove my trust to you. And I'm going to... Of the four people in here, I'm sure two of them I might recognize that are masked. Two of them I don't. I'm going to point my revolver at one of the ones I don't recognize. Mm-hmm. Not in a puffed up, arm extended way, but just in a in the, pull the hammer back. Pointing on it, one of them says, do you need, do you really need a proof of trust right here, right now? He looks over to the gang member, looks back at you. Pull it, Zani. Well, there's a proof of trust right there. There's a proof of loyalty right there. I look at the one I'm pointing the gun at. What do you think of that? What do you think of your loyal, fearless leader? What, what, what was it? You boys stay here. I'm going to run into that house and just take what I want. And then three days later, you had to go bust them out of jail. And now you're in here with a gun pointed at you. Things have changed since you last ran with us, Zane. There's been some uh, improvements on the formula. You can't do it, can you? Uh, I'm going to... Turn my wrist sideways, lower my revolver. (laughs) I'm going to look over at Gideon. (laughs) And I want to say, damn it. And I'm going to flick it up and pull the trigger. (gasps) And I'm, yeah. (laughs) Oh, they are. Yes, you are. Not a Gideon. No, 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 I know. I'm going to flick it up and pull the trigger. Because I've got to move as soon as he does that, too. So, and I'm, I'm. You want me to roll? You ready? Roll for it. All right. Woo. Roll it. Woo! Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm shaking. <laughs> You're shaking. I need dice and stuff. Um, all right. I'm getting dice. Things are happening here. Okay. So, 16? 16. Oh, yeah. That'll. You see the, the eyes on his boy just widen. And, no, no, shit. <laughs> Give me some damage. Uh, the damage on that is seven. Seven. Okay, so he takes he takes a shot in the arm. Ugh, you shot me, Wiley. You, you, just, you let him shoot me. I pulled a hammer back. You still got it. I think this is an appropriate time to roll initiative. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Natural twenty. <laughs> oh. Not good at rolling initiative. So it's a grand total of 23. 23? If you're interested in something like that. Gideon. 14. 14. Mokrin. Modified 19. 19. Poppy. A beefy nine. Nine. (laughs) (laughs) That's actually not too bad. All right. You know, for someone with wide-eyed, scared, (laughs) there are people, you know. And two drinks in her. (laughs) (laughs) In her two foot, 10 inch, 35 pound body. Mm Mm-hmm. Makron, what is your dexterity modifier? It's plus three. Plus three? Okay, so you will go plus before. Three. And then... Okay, and you said that was seven points of damage to one of the, the bandits? Yes. Okay. Um, so the scene before you, you are all in the Amors dining room. Again, you were having a very fine, lovely dinner until you were so rudely interrupted by, apparently, Zanimus's drama. So, uh, Wiley Moran... Infamous outlaw. Um, and actually, you guys can go ahead. Um, go ahead, everyone. Roll me a, a history check. Um, you automatically succeed, mm-hmm. Johnny. Oh, no. I got a fourteen. Fourteen. Eleven. 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 Okay. <laughs> 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 so Gideon, you've kind of heard of this again, working in the detective agency that you did um, and kind of hearing stories out of the frontier. Sometimes some of the other detectives would kind of go out to the frontier and try to catch bounties on whatever outlaws were currently operating. The name suddenly clicks. This is Wiley Smokes Moran, the leader of the Black Smoke Gang. He has been operating out of the frontier for quite some time, evading capture, sometimes seemingly at the last minute through some power. At the expense of those closest to him. <laughs> sometimes Not at the grudge. expense. Of Do those I recall to him. whether he's wanted dead or alive? There is yeah. definitely a bounty on him. Mm-hmm. And yes, it is 
definitely wanted dead or alive. Okay. And if there's any kind of body language going on here between Gideon and Zonimus, it's I am trying to pull all of his attention. Yeah. And get everybody else in here safe and him not looking at them or noticing them because Zonimus knows how this is going to end. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also just thinking, for me, I'm going to try and take out two of the bandits as quickly as possible. All right. Yeah. Yep, you get. To I got it. Uh-huh. I got that one. <laughs> yep. Okay, so you're up, Zonimus. <clears throat> so this left off with him saying, "You still got it." When he does, I pull the hammer back again and swivel my revolver from the one I don't know to the one I do know, mm-hmm. and say, "Oh, I, it's gotten even better since last time." <laughs> and I will. Uh, I'm gonna see. I'm. How ready does Gideon look? He's ready. As soon as as soon as you pop up, I was. You don't have much more of a chance for this to end peacefully. Remember, you got. As soon as you fire, he's going. Ability check on him. Oh, darn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, okay. So intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> you could try. If, if, any, if anything, I'm 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 gonna talk. I'm talking to Smokes, but I'm trying to intimidate Larry. <laughs> so yeah, let's go for that. Larry, Mo, Curly, and Joe. <laughs> uh, uh, Daryl and Daryl. <laughs> Larry, matchstick. Uh, that is, um, I, I, I sh- no. <laughs> so, it's a natural one oh, with no. a three on the D4 and then a bonus four. So, does that guidance, can you, can, you can't crush it, you can't. Not with that kind of guidance, right? That's, As you said, you were one. looking at smokes and so- he, what, he didn't know you so, were trying so to intimidate like, him. It's, it's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> My goal was to make his guys go, come on, Wiley, man. Come on, Wiley. But if not, then I know it will, so I'm ready to shoot. Yeah, it's so it seems to be that Wiley has chosen the most loyal, the most, like, ride or die. Like, whatever Wiley says, we are going to do it. Okay, then I will squeeze. Yeah. Yeah, so. on the one that I, so I've only wounded one. I'm going to take a poke on the one that I do know. Okay. Hammer's caught, pulled back. That is a... Eight. You oh, no. shoot, and it just pew, goes into the wall. I hate talking tough and missing. <laughs> <laughs> He's rattled. All right. Too bad it's not a can. And with my free hand, <laughs> with my free hand, I'm going to grab my mead. Okay. I'm going to shrug, <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, there went your chance. <laughs> and I'm going to take a swig. All right. Makren. So... As soon as that first gunshot went off, Mokrin has has started to move his hands just below or at the edge of the table, right? Where it's doing that swirly motion that we've seen before and that cantrip of of acid splash, that kind of swirly green golf ball size, you know, orb or whatever. Mm -hmm. But his emotions are heightened and and this is intense and there's people in danger. And he isn't really even noticing that it's gotten bigger and bigger. And in this few seconds, now it's about the size of a grapefruit. Mm-hmm. And he throws chromatic orb <gasps> at uh, Wily Smokes. Oh my God. Range God, touch my attack. God, no. Natural 17. Natural 17. So you, again, you're forming this here because you're just, he tricked me. You're so upset. And you hurl it at him. And he, oh, what the what? It's almost as if your spell just dissipates in the air. What the what? Makar has never seen this before. He's just like, Phew. it's never failed him. He's just like, whoa. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I thought we were friends, Makar. You were going to help me out. And he, as a move action, just kind of like starts to st- not necessarily stumble, but kind of stumble back to position himself in front of the mayor. Or maybe if the mayor's still seated beside the mayor. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, uh, you, you lied to me. I lie to everybody. It's not just you. Don't take it personally. And then he looks at the, uh, yes, he looks at uh, the mayor and says, go get the book. Yeah, Mayor, mayor Jonathan just kind of nods and I think that would be best. <laughs> Wiley <clears throat> relaxes back as if, again, he's still having just a pleasant conversation. Now, I understand your feelings. Everyone's everyone's just feeling so, so emotionally high. Y'all need to just 
calm down a little bit. And there's this kind of aura that he is starting to give off. This very, very kind of dark aura of power. And you start to get the idea, like, we have no clue what we're messing with. I need everybody to give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh my gosh. Hey. Oh no. Oh, that's a natural one. Oh no. <laughs> natural two for Makran. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. So, Zanimus and Poppy, you two are the only ones unaffected by this. You know him. He talks a big game. Usually he can back it up, but you know if you play your cards right, you can get out of this. Poppy, you are just putting your trust completely in your friends, in your companions, and just from what's going on, you you figure, okay, if I keep my head, if I keep my cool, we can get through this. Gideon and Makran, you two are frightened. (gasps) You are completely frightened of Wily, and you're not sure what he's going to do if he doesn't get what he wants. Gideon, give me a religion check. Okay. Three. Three? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's too scared. Yeah, you're... Um, yeah. In, in the moment, you're just so, like... It's that primal fear in the gut of your belly. It's that same fear from that night when Ooh. everything went wrong. Okay. Yeah, I'm frozen. I'm frozen. I can't move. <laughs> I'm... Oh, criminy. It's that, oh. it's that same feeling of... You don't know how bad this is going to get, but he's got something about him that he's not afraid to do anything. Okay. And it is your turn. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Uh, nope. Uh, I'm frozen. Okay. I cannot. I cannot. Yeah, you're I, just... I, and you are seeing a tear come out from his eyes. He is deathly, and you've gone. he's gone pale. Oh, no. All right, so the bandits have their weapons trained on you. And they're actually going to hold their action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because while one of them now is um, the one that you shot, Zonimus, definitely has his weapon trained at you. Mm -hmm. Shaken just a little bit because you've injured him severely and he didn't take too kindly to that. He has not been given the order to actually retaliate. Hmm. Okay. Um, and another one, Makran, trains their weapon on you. Looks at Wiley and just, you want me to take this one out, boss? He's got mojo. And Wiley just kind of smiles a little bit and looks over at you and says, No, I like his audacity. You got one, Makran. And so they're, so they, yeah, they're kind of holding, holding position, holding their action. And Makran's just still like, you know, he just, he can't, he doesn't know what to do. Like he's, it's never failed him before. He's never seen anybody dispel or just stop whatever that was and so he's still processing that and is of course afraid poppy what would you like to do well i just think that everybody just needs to cool up and i'm going to take i know it sounded really weird because you can't see what i'm doing but i'm going to take my glass of water i'm going to throw it like just the water not Mm -hmm. the glass at wiley and cast ice knife okay it will attempt to 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 hit him with it maybe okay so that's going to be 12. 12. <laughs> yeah, you just need to cool Wait. off. Nope. I'm going to cash. Uh, I'm going to ask fate to help me out on that one. All right. Yeah. Put down the poker chips. Chip. <laughs> poker chip. Come on. Please. Please. This is really cool. Make <laughs> this happen. 18? 18. My goodness, Miss Poppy. So you just, you just need to cool off and you throw the water at him and the water coalesces into this very sharp shard that just nicks him across the cheek and you see the blood start to kind of leak from this wound. So he took nine. Nine. Ooh. And then anyone within five feet of him has to make a 12 dex save. And if they fail, they take four. Okay. But if they pass, they pass. Yeah, you know, I'll give one of the I'll give one of the one of his bandits save. That's a five, so we'll take you said four points. Four. Okay. I don't suppose it's the one that hit me. A so meaty four. <laughs> a meaty four. Yeah. <clears throat> and Wiley just Oh my goodness. We do have a spunky little whip crack. He's seems somewhat surprised that someone actually landed a hit.
Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. Hello, fellow D&Ders. My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons and Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind the curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d20tocurtain.com or at d20tocurtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday, Keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon, and Plausible Deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. So, getting to the bottom of the round, Mayor Thur Jonathan slowly stands up and says, Mr. Moran, I will give you what you want, but please, leave my guests alone. This does not concern them. Wild. Smart man. And the two of them get up and he motions for the mayor to go first and he kind of looks back at the rest of you as he reaches the door. Boys, have fun. I knew it. And he shuts the door to the dining room behind him. Don't suppose that ended the frightened condition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling any less frightened I right know. now. You so are- since he has moved away from you, at the end of your turn, Gideon and Makran, you both can make the save again. Okay. So we're back to the top of the round. Zanimus. I'm so very angry. All For right. the second time. Well, <laughs> I'm going to get you. Well, that's, that's not the end of him. Last we'll see him. Uh, look, Gideon. I'm still, I'm still just very casually sitting here in my seat. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth and you, in my chair. And you two, and I'll, I'm going to look over at Poppy and Mac and shake my head. And then I'm going to spin back around to the one who's shaking and trim, trembling and holding a gun on me. Nice. I'm just going to shoot him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 25. 25, Ooh. yes, that will hit. For 12. 12, okay. Is he still up? That actually will, yeah. You you kind of you swing around real fast, mm-hmm. center mass, shoots, okay. and he so, slumps against the wall and kind of slides down. I so I yes I whatever. I look at them like okay, uh, 
and I'm going to, uh, so I shoot him, he drops, and I stand up, pull a dagger out, and start walking toward the one I do know. Okay. And that's my turn. Okay. Is that the one you shot before? The one I, the one that just went down is the one I shot and hit. Okay. The one I'm walking toward is the one I shot and missed. Yes, yeah, yes sir. Uh, Makrin. So Makrin can't believe what's going on. He's the, the guy, you know, turns and leaves. And so he steps up. Let me know how this works, how this plays. We can change if we need to. So he steps up onto the chair where the mayor was and then runs across the table. Okay. And as he steps up on, as he steps up on the chair, he pulls a knife out of his boot, you know, okay. and then runs across the table for the guy that hasn't been hurt yet. The guy that was missed. Okay. Uh, that the Zonimus missed at. Has his dagger out and goes to stab it at this guy. Okay. So heroic. Yes. And rolled a three <laughs> in so doing. <laughs> and so he is still, it's all shaken Listen. and jittery. And he's just like, Ugh. you know. You, you kind of, you, you had that moment of like bull in a china shop, like not like completely realizing the full implications of your actions. <laughs> You're just like, this is going to be cool. But you, so you hop up on the mayor's chair, pull out your dagger, and you're running across the table. The silverware and plates are going flying, you're losing your footing a little bit in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> and instead of actually hitting this guy, you just kind of like face plant next to him. And you're just, uh-huh. but an attempt was made, and therefore no one can judge you. <laughs> oh, and then a uh, wisdom save at the end of my round uh, yes. is a modified 12. 12, okay. You are still shaken. Okay. That's why you slipped in the match. That's why I slipped in the match. Yes. So Wiley is out and away. Seems that he and the mayor are headed for the mayor's office. That will constitute his round. Gideon. Is any of them near Poppy? The one that was nearest to Poppy, Zonimus took down. Okay. Is there one anywhere closer? Yeah, there's one that's like trained on you. No, I mean closer to her. Oh, closer to her? Whichever one is closer to her, I'm going after. Aww. In my head, Kanan, it was Aww. a little bit moving toward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that. The, basically, the one, the, the other, on. the other one that's closest to Poppy is currently being threatened by Makrin and uh, Zonimus. So. Oh well. Okay. We're all gonna look at. It's him. a very tight ballroom blitz. Apparently, we are. Yes, <laughs> we are all going after one guy. So that's who I am going after. There's a man in the back who's ready to attack. <laughs> yes. Turn into a ballroom, ballroom blitz. blitz. Ballroom blitz. <laughs> The Actually, no, wait, is there one behind me or closer? There's yes. one? Okay, let's yes. go after I'm just, I shake it off because there is a bit of, once he leaves, I'm still afraid, but my source of the fear is actually out of the room. So Correct. I am, so I'm no longer a disadvantage. I can actually attack. So I am going to immediately turn around and two daggers right in this guy's face. Okay. Hopefully. We'll yep. find out. The this dice are new. spicy today. I know, the dice are. Well, it's I just upping the dramatic tension. Down. <laughs> poker chips of fate everywhere. The, the fate chips, chips are flying today. I got a three. The dice I cannot, are spicy. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's actually see if we get another dice. Here. <laughs> okay, this has got to be better. And it's not. Oh, uh, no. a, uh, That would be, with my dagger, it'd be a 13 to hit. Okay, a 13. Yeah, it's just better, a three. But. Yeah, it's better than a three, and luckily it actually does, because um, these guys just have you know, basic leather armor, nothing too fancy. So you do find kind of a weak point, you know, probably on his arm where he's not as armored and you just sink that dagger right in. There we go. For a six points of damage. Six, okay. And then with my offhand tack, I'm going to attack with the other dagger. Okay. With a 24. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Uh, Once this one does it. not get my strength bonus, but straight D4, a three. Three more points? Yeah. Okay. He is looking bloodied. So yeah, so. you've gotten a couple good kind of, you've got him pinned up against the wall. Yeah, you with just see him <clears throat> scream just to try to get off this fight. Now let's see if I can get, get yeah, rid of the Yeah, let's make your wisdom save. 12. 12, okay. You've gotten to a point where you've gotten past the initial shock. No, no, no. No, no, no. No? I forgot he's proficient with wisdom saving throws because of Paladin. Okay. 14. 14. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in that case, you completely okay. just, you had that moment of just, again, the fear in the in your gut just gripped you. But then remembering those lessons from the temple and how you kind of recall the superior mother's voice in order to work through your fear. You must accept it. And so you accept that as a part of you and then push through it. Got it. Alrighty. That will bring us to our bandits. So 
They brought guns to a knife fight. <laughs> I got one of each. <laughs> yep. I was going to dinner. <laughs> I did not bring my gun. So, uh, Gideon, the one mm-hmm. that you just stabbed is going to attempt to kind of get their gun between the two of you mm-hmm. and shoot. I'm going to go ahead and give them disadvantage because, you know, again, they're bringing a gun to a knife fight. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that is a natural one. So they shoot themselves in the foot. Oh, oh no. literally. <laughs> As he pulls that out of the holster. <laughs> uh, you know, because you've, you've kind of got one dagger in like his mm. gun hand. So it hit the nerves straight into the floor. Zanus, your guy's feeling a little more personal. Mm-hmm. So he's going to pull out his, you know, his big Bowie knife and try to shank you in the gullet. I respect that. <laughs> Seventeen? Yes. Yeah. Seventeen does in fact. <laughs> okay. That will be five points of slashing damage. Well, Larry, I didn't know you cared. <laughs> and Makran, since you seem to be the last biggest threat, um, the last one is going to shoot at you. Yep. Laying prone on a table. <laughs> <laughs> but he is gonna miss wildly with a six. Cool. So that will bring us to Poppy. So, Bobby's been quiet all dinner. She's been raised to be seen and not heard, especially at dinner. We're having all of these men are having these conversations. And she and Maria had kind of had that that eye contact moment, that rebellious streak. We had Wiley come in and just act like he owned the daggum place. And she's feeling a little bit powerless. She, she, she got a hit in on him, but it wasn't as much as she wanted it to be. It wasn't what she wanted it to be. She's tired of feeling helpless all the time, and she's tired of these doggone snakes. And so she's going to wild shape for the first time <gasps> into a giant poisonous snake. Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> so where once stood a halfling, in a Suddenly, very pretty dress. Now is snake. I am snake. So my reach is now ten feet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there any bad guys within ten feet of me? Oh yes. Okay, I'm gonna try to bite them. Very gladly so. I'm gonna try to bite them. All right. Let's see if I bite them. I really want to bite them. That's a nine. Oh. Oh. Yes, so I'm not used to my new snake body. <laughs> yeah. Mokrin is like laying face down on the table. You know, he's like <laughs> tripped in the mashed potatoes and swung and missed and stuff. And, you know, this little flash of striking movement off off to the side of him. What does he see? What does she look like? What does um, the snake look like? Probably similar to a diamondback would have been in her book. Because she's only has, she's never met a snake in person. She only goes off of what she's seen in the book. So it looks like a textbook, if you'll excuse the pun, like rattlesnake. I like a rattlesnake. Oh, yeah, snake. we'll go. Wow. It's it a, turned into a rattler. I have a biggin. Biggin. It says, it says giant, but it's a medium creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, giant, giant compared to other it's snakes. Bigger, it's thing. bigger than what you normally are. <laughs> right. <laughs> Freaking six, you know. Yeah, you got, you got a nice big, you know, probably 10 feet worth of snake here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive for, again, you know, all, all of a sudden, poof, snake. But if you seem scared at all, she would give you a little snaky wink. <laughs> if, snakes have, if snakes can wink, this one winks. That lidless wink wink. <laughs> right. <laughs> the membrane is going over the eye. Yes. And a wink. tongue flick. If, I don't think that's going to help mock her, really. <laughs> You do get a shout of surprise from the remaining bandits, and especially the one that you tried to lash out at. And it's just, where, where'd this rattler come from? Yeah. Even though I missed, I am rattling. <laughs> Snake tail is just Oh, it's like that moment going. in Clash of the Titans where you hear the Medusa. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, seems to be that the uh, Black Smoke gang is in a bit of a pickle. We'll have to find out what happens next time. Red Dirt D&D is Ash King as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Macron Stone Shaper, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester as Poppy Tealeaf, and I'm Michael Cross as Gideon Block. Our sound producer is Mark Coffrin. Our theme music was created by the cinemagician PJ Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride, and our sound effects courtesy of TabletopAudio.com. 
You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and our new home on the interwebs, reddirtdnd.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word out about us. If you like what you've heard, make sure and subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. We have several giving levels to help us grow up big and strong. And finally, a special thank you to KOSU for giving us a platform to do what we love so much. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Calban frontier. Frontiers.